Hi guys, welcome to another video. My name is Derek Moridi. I'm a portrait photographer from Nairobi and happy new year if you're watching this in the new year uh happy 2019 the past year in december i didn't have my phone for a very long time and i remember the last video we made was on uh you know how to start photography easily and of course it has to be done on a mobile phone now since i haven't had a phone for a whole month it seems like I'm in the market for a new phone and I'm sure for those of you that are also interested in starting photography maybe starting on your mobile phone is definitely the easiest way to start so you and me are sort of in the same you know we're in the same situation here we need to find a phone to start photography today's video what I am going to do is I'm going to take you through some things that I think are important to consider before you get a phone to start photography that is coming up next. So guys, let's get right into the video. And the first thing that you are going to have to consider when you're getting a phone to do mobile photography is the brand that you're going to choose. So what brand of phone are you going to get? Now, brands are very many producing different kinds of phones, each with their own capabilities and reputations and things like that. When it comes to brands, in order to help you narrow down what brand you should get, uh, I divide brands into two categories. So there are the market segmenters and non-market segmenters. The market segmenters will look at the market, divide it into three distinct groups. High, the premium or high spenders, the low, the middle income or, you know, medium spenders, and then the really low income, you know, uh, earners. And these market segmenters will look at these three distinct groups and make phones for each of those segments of the market. Then with the market non-segmenters, what happens is they just pick the market, make a product and put it in there. No divisions into the market, they're just making one product and selling it to everyone in the market. Now, why is this market segmenter, non-market segmenter important? Well, if a brand is a, is, a, is a market segmenter, what happens is they will be making different phones for each particular segment of the market and they will be putting distinct features into each of these phones. The low income phones will not be optimized for things like photography. Some of them don't even have cameras to begin with. However, with the, you know, the premium and high spending part of the market, these phones are really optimized. They have so many unique features and their cameras are really, really good. Examples of market segmenters are Samsung and Techno. Non-market segmenters, on the other hand, you know, they just take a product and put it in the market. It has all the features that you need. So the phone might be highly priced, but what it simply means is that if you're in the low income bracket of the market, you're going to possibly have to break the bank to get such a phone. And if you're already in the high income bracket, well, you have the money to just buy it. So everybody gets to access all the features, all the benefits of having that one product. And that's where the second thing that you should consider comes in and which is the features. So like we said, the market segmenters will optimize their high end phones for things like photography, right? Now it means that if you get a middle range uh, line of phone, uh, there are some features that you won't get. And that's kind of um, that's kind of tricky if you think about it. So I will give you an example. Samsung has the S series line of phones. So you have the S8, the S7s, the the new S9 and the Note 9s. These are all in the very high end part of the market. And these phones have all the features you can think of. Their cameras have. You can switch between video modes and video resolution. They have things like dual face detection and so many cool features. However, if you come into the mid range, um, if you come to their mid range line of phones, 
the A plus, the A6, the A5s, the G7s, the G5s, you will find that yes, they do have some cool camera features. However, you can't change things like video resolution. You're just stuck with 1080p at 30 frames per second. So that's something to consider if you're planning to get into video, starting with your mobile phone, you may have to break the bank with a Samsung. However, when it comes to products like the iPhones and the OnePluses, which fall into the non-market segment apart, what you're finding is that you have a phone that is not really for any particular part of the market, it's just been put there. Yes, the iPhone is priced, but the OnePlus is really not that pricey. And it's something I think you can save up for and get really easily. But the point is, the OnePlus is in the market and you get all the features. You can change video resolution, you can change photo modes. There's so many things that you can change. Now, as we talk about features, there are two things that I think are important for you to consider as you are you know, looking for a mobile phone to start doing photography or video on. When it comes down to features, there are two things that I think are important for you to consider. One is the ability to control. So are you able to get into the phone and control things like autofocus, exposure, white balance, ISO, and things like that? And is there the ability to also control video mode? So are you able to shoot at different resolutions? 4K, 1080p, are you able to change frame rates? 24 frames, 120 frames. So all those things are important. The ability, you want to get a phone where you know that you can get into the settings and actually control the phone and let and do what it is that you need to do and not have the phone control everything that you are going to do. This seems to be the trend now with phones that have been coming out for say the past 10 years where, where brands are really just giving people more control over how they take their photographs and they have this, this feel like professional cameras. The second feature that you need to look out for is consistency. So what do I mean by consistency? I will give you an example of the OnePlus. When the OnePlus 5T came out, it had a particular way that you could uh, you know, play around with the camera the functionality of the camera was built in a particular way. When you move from the 5T to the new 6, to the new OnePlus 6 and the 6T, there isn't really much difference in the functionality of the camera. And that is a good thing because it means if you lose your 5T or you feel that you want to move to the new 6T, what happens is, is that there isn't that steep or huge learning curve. You don't really have to reorganize your mind and uh, you know, try to learn a new way that the camera works. However, with brands like Samsung and Techno, because of the market segmentation that they're doing, there is going to be sort of a slight difference, not a big one, but there's always a slight difference in the way that the cameras work. If you take the top line of Samsung phones compared to the mid-range Samsung phones, of course, the autofocus in the high-end ones works so much differently from the mid-range ones. And that is from experience, by the way. So that kind of thing is something you also need to think about. Are you ready to constantly relearn if you're going to be shifting or do you want to stick to the same market throughout? That's something that's something that you're going to have to think about. And um, I think consistency is something that, you know, keeps you sort of in check. You don't really have to keep bouncing around. You can always get your phone out, continue using it the way that you used to from five, six, or even 10 years ago. I think it's something that you should also consider moving forward in your photography. Now, the third and final thing that I think you guys should definitely be thinking about is the price. Price will determine what phone you get from the get-go. And it is the reason I put it as the last thing that you need to consider. I also put it as the last thing that you need to consider because when it comes to matters of money, there are this this is really just an individual thing it will all come down to personal finances now i've talked about some different brands these are brands that you might not even be able to afford and that's okay because there are very many other brands out there 
Huawei and you know Infinix Nixes. I know they're cheap, I know they're affordable, I know they have great battery life. The last time I took a selfie on an Infinix, it took my x-ray. My x-ray. Anyway, this is the point. Price will definitely determine the phone that you get. How much you really intend to spend on your phone is up to you. And I cannot specifically tell you that this is how much you should spend on this phone. This is not how much you should spend on a phone. That is totally up to you. But I feel when it comes to matters of price, if you have thought about the brand that you want to get vis-a-vis -vis the features that are on the phone, you should be able to, to you know, kind of get a, a sort of like uh, a range of how much you are going to spend on a particular phone. It all comes back down to price. But remember, if you want the optimum features from a phone, you are definitely going to have to spend a lot more. If you want the latest phone on the market, remember you are going to have to spend a lot more. There are a ton of good, good phones out there with a lot of features that are sort of, with a lot of features that are sort of, you know, old. Or simply put that there are phones that are in the market right now that are older models, but you will still be able to get really good photography from them. So it's something that you should consider. Such phones are actually much, much cheaper, but they do their job very well. So guys, I believe that is the end of this video. We've talked about brand, we've talked about features, we've talked about pricing. Uh, these, are, these are just a few of the things that I think are important when selecting a mobile phone. They will help you sort of de decide on what works best for you. Um, then again, you could decide to throw them all out and just go out for a phone that you believe will be a best fit for you. Um, so yeah, pretty much that's it. Um, I think my last words in this video are, please, please do not buy Infinixes. They are not phones. Goodbye.